Hi, my name is Jay Richardson. I'm an interpreter with the Shenandoah Valley Battlefields Foundation. On this day, 156 years ago, the Third Battle of Winchester, the largest, costliest battle fought in the Shenandoah Valley, occurred here on these grounds. Union General Philip Sheridan's Army of the Shenandoah, totaling 39,000 men, attacked Jubal Early's Army of the Valley, totaling 15,000. The total number of troops engaged here was more than double the current population of Winchester. On the morning of September 19th, the Federal Army marched west from Berryville, Virginia. Because of a traffic jam in an area known as the Berryville Canyon, Early was given time to concentrate his forces on the northwestern side of Winchester down to where it meets the Berryville Pike. Sheridan concentrated his forces from Abrams Creek all the way to Redbud Run, which sits at the bottom of a ravine down here to my right. Sheridan began the initial infantry advance at 11.40 a.m. After marching through the wooded areas behind me here, the Federals emerged into what is known as Middle Field, where I'm standing today. The 19th Corps, anchored here at the edge of Redbud Run, soon took very heavy fire from Major James Brethren's horse artillery, as well as Confederate sharpshooters across Redbud Run. The 6th Corps also took very heavy fire from Confederates in the West Woods, down where the Berryville Pike is today. One Confederate among James Brethren's artillery recalled the scene. Our cannoneers made their battery roar, sending their death-dealing messengers with a precision and constancy that made the earth around them seem to tremble. A more murderous fire I never witnessed than was plunged into this heterogeneous mass. Union attacks succeeded in breaking the Confederate lines of John Gordon and Stephen Ramser. However, Gordon and Robert Rhodes launched a counterattack into a gap that had formed in the Union ranks. Robert Rhodes was immediately killed by an exploding artillery shell. General Cuvier Grover's division of the 19th Corps alone suffered 1,500 casualties in less than one hour. Sheridan decided to call off George Crook's Army of West Virginia to launch an assault on Redbud Run. At about 3 p.m., divisions under Isaac Duvall and Joseph Thoburn attacked. After Duvall was wounded in the leg, future president Colonel Rutherford B. Hayes took command. Captain William McKinley, another future president, also led an infantry company here. After about 30 minutes, they were able to drive back the Confederate divisions of Gordon, Rhodes, and Ramser who fell back towards Winchester. Early's troops fell back and formed an inverted L-shaped line around the city of Winchester. As they faced heavy infantry assaults, a massive Union cavalry force was advancing south up the Valley Pike. The Union cavalry drove the Confederates from Fort Collier and Fort Jackson. The Confederate defenses collapsed and they were sent whirling through Winchester. Today, the 3rd Winchester Battlefield Park is comprised of over 600 acres of the battlefield with over six miles of walking trails. The James R. Wilkins Winchester Battlefields Visitor Center features interpretive displays detailing Winchester's Civil War history. Visitors today can walk these hallowed grounds to understand, draw meaning from, and remember the men and women who lived through that fateful day in September of 1864.